I love football. I bloody love football. God. Back of the net. You're very welcome along to DLR Waves show. This week we have two guests. First up, we have Kerry Letman, Kerradio Letmane, as the, the nickname you've gotten through the show is. Uh, Kerry, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. You were once described by former DLR Waves player Katie Burdett as real posh and all. Do you think that's a fitting description? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I'm the poshest on the team, team, but I'd probably be up there, according to the girls, anyway. <laughs> who's the who's the poshest? I need to know who's the poshest. Um, it would have to be Nadine. Nadine Clare is really? the poshest. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll try getting Nadine on. Yeah, yeah, it's a good thing we don't have you both on the same week. That would just uh, I know. That would be too be much posh. posh overload. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we won't ask how you got so posh, but um. You uh, you did well on the weekend. Uh, you scored two goals there. That was a uh, it, it was um, it was a good it was a good overall performance. Bouncing back from Tuesday, how did you feel about the performance on the weekend? Yeah, I think it was really good, and um, we definitely needed that anyway after the game on Tuesday. I think we were all on such a high from the game against Shells, and then I don't really know what the the problem was on Tuesday or what the mindset was, but it just. I think even in the warm up we didn't feel as up for it or as ready as we did for shells. So I think we just needed to put that aside and go back out then against um against Cork and just show everyone what we're made of and that we're able to bounce back and get the win, which we did, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a difficult one to see. It was such a great win against Shelburne, probably probably one of the best days in the club's history and then suddenly it, it was all just very flat. What was the what was the message going into the game against Cork then to kind of rectify that? Um, well, it was like just to go out there and show that we are capable of of winning games and getting goals and everything else as well. Like so, I think we just kind of we had a chat about the Athlone game, um, and we all just wanted to put it aside then and show everyone what we're made of. Yeah, yeah it was one of those days that. Um, like a draw probably would have been a fair result, and then it was a very unfortunate own goal that uh, it, uh, made it a loss. Um, but in terms of the Cork, two goals for yourself, um, you're, uh, you're, um, you are you're didn't get much time to celebrate, to be fair. You were kind of swarmed by your teammates. Did you have a celebration in mind? Um, I didn't actually have one in mind. It all just kind of happened. <laughs> but I'll have to work on it and try to come up with a better celebration next time. Yeah. Uh, I think we all just kind of jumped together and just... We're happy. Yeah, yeah. I notice when uh, I notice when you when anybody scores, it's just essentially a swarm of players around them, uh, rather than any individual <laughs> celebrations. Uh, yeah, I don't think we get a minute. We all just sprint together. Yeah. We're too used to running, I think. Yeah. And uh, in terms of in terms of yourself, you're a bit more used to giving assists than scoring. Uh, so how did um, how do you how did you feel when you were one on one with the keeper there? Yeah, no, I was delighted to actually get the goals, but um, I think it's one of those things, especially when, when you get past the keeper and it's an open goal, you're kind of under more pressure than if the goalie was actually in the goal, so I was delighted that it went in. I don't think I'd have lived it down because my friends were there as well, so I don't think I'd have lived it down if I missed the open goal now, so I was delighted. Yeah, you had a big, uh, yes, you had a big, uh, a carry supporter section, which uh, <laughs> I saw there from the media box. Um, it's um, it's a very it's the team itself uh, seems like a almost a supporters club. Everyone seems to get on very well. It seems like there's very much a um, very very much kind of a close knit almost family dynamic within the team. Oh yeah, there definitely is. I think everyone gets along. There's nobody. There's no one outside. Like there's no clicks or anything. And like even I know that you've asked before about the um, who's chair a desert or be on a desert island with but I think honestly like I've thought about it before and I was like it's actually impossible to choose because everyone just gets along so well that you just you'd want to be on the island with anyone really like I just think there's so much support and like everyone's just friends so it's it's a great family really. That desert island question started uh, started as a fun hypothetical, but got uh, turned very serious very quickly. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I, I, we need to come up with a new question for it. Uh, if I if I did ask you from a practical point of view, and I will say this, Avril Briarly picked you for the desert island, so that doesn't mean you have to pick her, but I will just say she she did pick you. Uh, who who would you pick from a practical point of view? We had Lynn Craven picking Jess Gleason to scare off wild animals. Uh, which is a, yeah. which is a good point because I wouldn't start on Jeff Leeson, definitely. 
Yeah, that is a good one. Um, God, from a practical point of view. Well, definitely Kate and Catherine anyway, because they're nurses, so if anything happened, I'd be safe. Um, then I, I would obviously bring Avril. She's my best friend. Um, so she's making me laugh. Okay. And um, Nadine, I think I'd bring Nadine as well because she'd also make me laugh, but I think she's so fearless. Like, you see her on the pitch, right? She'd literally just... I think she'd just bash into anyone. So if if there was someone that we needed to get away from us, I think she'd be the first to scare them away as well. <laughs> okay. I don't know how this question took uh, t- took such a turn, because uh, when, when we started asking it, it was just fun, hypothetical, you know, you're on a desert <laughs> island, three people, and then it turned into, like, well, what if it interrupts training, and what if it, uh, what if it interrupts the season? I uh, know. When you think of any other player, you're like, oh, but I could bring them because they'll do this. And then you think of other people, and you're like, it's really hard. Yeah. It's a hard question. It's a hard one, yeah. Uh, and... In terms of the season so far, it's been a it's been a fairly good season. I mean, aside from we we talked about the Athlone game already, really P Mount the only big blip. Uh, Bow's draw was a little bit disappointing. The P Mount game was interesting because probably based on the second half, probably probably were the better team. They probably played, were better in the first half, so a draw probably would have been a fair result. Maybe they just got there with their experience. How do you look back on the season so far? Um, well, I think we've done really well. Like we always seem to put it up to the top three, as they say. Um, so I think, like we do well against them, but so we just need to bring that intensity and like bring our game into the other games as well. Just like we just need to go out there and try to win every game. Like I think we have done well, but at times we've probably just lost concentration, and maybe that's why we've we haven't gone out and won all the games or even gotten a draw when when we should have. Um, so I think I think we've done well. I think we could have done better in some games, but um, I do think that we're all starting to believe a lot more, especially after the Shelburne game, that we can go out there and win games and get as many goals as as we, as possible. Like so, um, I think for the like it's a long season, as you know, so we have a lot more games to go. So I think if we go out and just try to win as many as we can in the next few games, especially leading up to the break, because it would be ideal to be up there at the top of the table going into the break in June. So um, I think, yeah, we've done well, but I think we we just need to go out and try and win the next few games. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, it seems as though everyone kind of has to focus on the next game because the quality of the league has really gone up. I mean, mm. you, look at a, you look at even the new team in the league this season, Sligo, they're probably, they're probably the best new team to join the league. Uh, you look at the newer the newer sides in Athlone and Bowes, uh, they've uh, they've really kicked on. So it doesn't seem like there's any easy games this season. No, definitely not. I don't think. Well, I know myself anyway. I don't think the team even goes out to any game and thinks, "Oh, this will be an easy one," because it never is. And if you went out there with that kind of a mindset, you you just wouldn't do well. Like I think we have to go out with the mindset before every game, thinking these are going to be tough and that's the way it is this season like everyone is tough you see the results each week it's so unpredictable you can't you can't predict anything so um it definitely the talent in the league is insane and it just keeps improving every every season i think you were saying there before we started recording you've uh you've been at dlr waves your whole playing career how did you how did you end up playing for dlr waves were you always going to be a football player um, I actually wasn't. I was a hockey player, so I was playing hockey from a young age. I think I started when I was about six, um, and I think I only started football then when I was about 14, which is quite late considering like a lot of the girls would have started, like that would have been their main sport. Um, but there was a point that I was kind of between playing hockey and soccer, so I did like, I went to play half a hockey match and then went to play half a football match. So I was actually the first club I started in. It was just my friend played for Ennis Gary, and um, they needed players, so they were like, oh, is there any chance you can come up and play? So I was like, yeah, like just to fill the numbers. So um, I went up there, and I was playing with Ennis Gary then for a few years, and then I went to Joey's for, I think, two years. Um, and then from there, I think I was like 17 maybe, 17 when I went to... I was training with DLR Waves while I was still with Joey's. 
um, and then I signed for them when it was UCD ways, and then it changed then again back to DLR. Hmm. So yeah, I was with I was with three or at a Sterry Joey's then DLR. Yeah, so it's, it's been a it's been an interesting road. It's just like you started playing quite late. Um, what was it about football? Do you think you, did you did you kind of get hooked on playing football once you started? Yeah, I don't really know. Like I still I did miss hockey. Um. But I just felt like there was more, like, because I have three older brothers as well, like, and they play football. So um, I was kind of just out with them more playing that. And I feel like it's easier to, like, go out and practice football or play football on the green. Like, you can't really go out with your hockey stick, like, onto the grass. And, like, you kind of need an archer and everything. So I find it harder to go out and practice and stuff. So I think I was actually just ended up playing a lot more football, like, during the week and everything. So um, I think I just ended up going for that then I just had to make the call on which I was going to go into and I just made the call to go into football which I'm happy with my decision but I do miss hockey as well Yeah well it's worked out well for you uh, particularly this season um, you're, uh, your position you're, uh, you're a winger um, were you always a winger? Um, yeah well I've kind of played all over the place to be honest um, except for defence um, but I've yeah I think I started off up front with Anna Scary, um, and then I kind of had moved into centre mid and yeah, playing on the wings as well. I was kind of just between a few. Like it, I play college football, and with college, like I'd be playing a uh, striker. So and then when I was with school, like when I was in school playing with the soccer team, I was playing centre mid. So I, I kind of have been just around. It's more attacking roles that I would be in rather than defending roles. Although I do try to get back and defend as much as I can as well. What kind of a what kind of winger do you prefer to play as? Do you prefer to play as kind of an inverted or a traditional winger? Um, I'm not too sure. I kind of just um, I like to be tra- transitional. Like I'd like to get up and attack, but also be there to get back and defend. I'd hate if a goal came from my side of the pitch. Yeah. So I try my best to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but I do like getting up forward with the team as well. Yeah. I think you'd definitely hear about it if a goal came from your side. I know. Uh, from, uh, from the centre-backs. Uh, uh, well, uh, Kerry, thanks very much for coming on. I know you're a Liverpool supporter, so you're probably uh, you're probably enjoying uh, you're probably enjoying this season so far. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, lots of celebrations. Hopefully, they can do the quadruple. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's six games to go for them. So if they if they win all six, they've got four trophies. Uh, well, it depends on how Man City do, I suppose. But uh, I think. Uh, I think it's a, it's an interesting one because I think a lot of I think a lot of uh, football supporters traditionally don't like it when the same team wins everything, but at the same time, I think a lot of I think a lot of people are sick of Man City winning everything. So it's a, it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting one in the English leagues, and then obviously you have Real Madrid in the uh, Champions League, who uh, maybe some people don't want to win the Champions League again. Yeah, I think so. I think we just need to. Like be happy when teams are doing well. Like I don't think it makes too much. Like I don't really mind who wins what. Like if the team are playing well, like I'm just happy to watch them. Like I don't really mind who wins. Like as I said, I only really support Liverpool because my boyfriend does. But <laughs> I um, it's a good team to support, obviously. But I just kind of watch the football rather than like being really excited about who's winning or whatever. It's just good to watch. Yeah. But there's no choice other than supporting Liverpool. Yeah, well, I have to watch all their games anyway, so I may as well just support them. May as well. You, 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 you can never. You, Man United was never going to be an option for you. I don't think but, so. Uh, no. Uh, uh, well, Terry, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, all Thank the best you. for the rest of the season, and we hope uh, we hope to talk to you again after a few games. Thanks very much for having me on. It's good to talk uh, to you. It's Apple for Sports on Twitter and Instagram. listening to the DLR Wave show. We had Kerry Letman on earlier there and now we have Captain Jeff Gleason. 
Uh, Jess, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jesse O'Gliolini is what we call you on the show after uh, George O'Gliolini. Um, you're, uh, you're captain this year of the team. Uh, has your role changed at all in the side? You were kind of a leader in the side last season and you had your, you had the captain's armband a few times, but now that you're club captain, has the, uh, has the role you play in the team changed at all? Um, I'd like to think it hasn't. Um, like, uh, initially, like when when Graham spoke to me about this, doing the the captain role, like I was I was totally shocked, like to be honest. Um, but he was he was obviously um happy enough for me to take it, and like as you said, like I seem to be able to to lead naturally anyway. So um, no, it it hasn't really changed. I'm still doing the same things. I haven't really changed what I'm doing. I'm just getting on with training and stuff, and just being there if anyone needs me, kind of thing. Anyway, like I was last year and. It seems like there are plenty of leaders in the team. It seems like the team's not short on leaders. Everyone's it seems like a lot of players, particularly particularly the kind of the players on the more experienced end, the kind of over twenty five players are very much uh, very much leaders in the side. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's plenty of um there's plenty of plenty of leaders like you have Rachel obviously who was vice captain the last couple of years. Um you have Eve who's coming in now, she's vice captain, Avil is very good. Um, the girls coming up through then like you have Kate Mooney she's really good like there's a lot of girls that are all just they're just born leaders and it's great that there's so many of us um, on the team like that it's it's not falling on just one person that everyone is is supporting each other and there's always someone for someone to go to if anyone needs anything or anything like that yeah. uh, the last week uh, the last kind of eight the, well the from Saturday to the Saturday before was a bit of a roller coaster. An amazing win against uh, Shelburne, probably one of the best days in the club's history. And then uh, I think everyone was really disappointed with the performance against that low, and it seems like things just didn't work out. But then back on track against Cork. What was the message going into the Cork game? I think it was just about kind of getting getting ourselves back to to playing our own game um, and to just showing that like we are we are good enough. Um, and that kind of t- Tuesday's game was it's just a, a kind of a, a blip I suppose in the in the whole grand scheme of things after such a good game on um, on Saturday and a great win against Shells I suppose we were kind of we kind of had ourselves built up um, and maybe that kind of hangover I suppose from the big win kind of took over on, on Tuesday night but gladly we kind of put that behind us and got three points and a good win on Saturday then against Cork it was probably a day. It was probably a, a day you didn't want the short turnaround. You pro- it probably would have been helpful if you were, if you didn't have the midweek game because uh, it's. I imagine after such a big win against Shelburne, you can really hit the ground hard. I, I suppose when, if you have to play a game uh, in in such a short turnaround. Yeah, I guess the, the the fact that we kind of we didn't even have a training session, I suppose, between the two games. Um, it was kind of just we played Shells and then obviously we went straight into the. Into the Tuesday game, then against um, against that loan, so it was kind of we got the hype of winning on Saturday, and I suppose the next time we were together then was for another for another big game against that loan, and um, and unfortunately things just didn't click on the night, and that loan got three points. Um, but look, we we learn our lesson, um, and we just have to make sure that if we do get more big results, that we don't let it happen again. Yeah. And uh, the performance against Cork was a lot more complete. Uh, comfortable in the end, six nil. But uh, you did have to do a, a decent bit of defending there in the first half and uh, at stages during the second half. They, it seems like there's no easy games. There's not really any games where yourself and the rest of the back line can switch off at all. No, definitely not. Um, and that's something that's that they're becoming really, really more consistent. I suppose in the league is that every team now um, causes problems for every other team. So literally, you have to be switched on for. 90 or whatever minutes, um, and if you do switch off, then you, you are liable like to to be under pressure. Um, so you have to make sure that you're constantly you're constantly on the ball, like, and you're you're paying attention because that that's the second that you don't concentrate can cause problems. Yeah, yeah, of course, and um, hopefully now, uh, hopefully now a good run a good run of games, uh, a difficult difficult away trip to Wexford. It's the this herd of the traditional top three that you're playing this season. Uh, good performance in the second half against P-Mount. 
uh, probably would have deserved something great win against Shells. What's the message going into this Wexford game? I think it's just that we, we need to have that belief in ourselves that we are um, we are well able, obviously, to compete with the top three. And I suppose the result against Shelburne proves that. Um, but we just have to get that belief back and, I suppose, go into the game knowing that if we perform, that we're just as good as those top three teams. And it looks like the incentive there as well this week is that like if we do get a result against them, we can actually j- jump them into third place. So that's um, an incentive in itself, even going into the game. So we just have to believe that we're well able to do it and hopefully it, it comes across on the pitch. Yeah, yeah it's, it seems as though that belief is a big thing. Many times in the past, last season, you came close to getting results off the big team. Obviously, you got that great nil-nil draw down in P-Mount. But it seems like maybe that bit of belief was lacking. But it was very much there in the game against Shelburne. And it was there in the game against Treaty. It was get, there in the game against Cork. And uh, hopefully it's there again against Wexford. It seems like the team is maturing. I mean, there's a lot of young players. But it seems like it seems like everyone in the team has, has grown a lot in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, for, for myself, obviously, it's my second season. Um, but the, a lot of this team has been together. Um, I think three seasons now, and the lads are in for three seasons, and um, so it's kind of it's all starting to come t- together at the right time, um, and you can see it obviously coming through on the pitch as well with our performances, um, and the fact that the lads behind us have such belief in us, it um, it only entices us to play even better on the pitch and believe in ourselves. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's a it's a quality side. Uh, you've had a new defense uh, defensive partner this season, in Lynn Craven, kind of a, a fullback turned centre back. Um, what's it, what's it been like? Because you've kind of been the I suppose the senior centre back, if you like, because uh, Lynn isn't traditionally a centre back. So uh, have you had to take kind of even more of a leadership role in that back line? Um, no, not really. Like Lynn is um, Lynn is very experienced there. Like I played with Lynn at Shelburne. Um, and obviously she was at West the last couple of seasons, so she has she has like a lot of experience as well. She's Champions League experience. Obviously they won the cup last year as well, so um, she's just as experienced as myself. And um, so the two of us together, we've really gelled well. And um, we've obviously been playing really well together, and we've got a really good understanding. So no, like we we're sharing the responsibility, so it's it's not too bad. Yeah. And you have uh, Olida Griffin there in the in the wings. You have uh, you have Louise Corrigan to come back from injury. So there's there's plenty of competition all around the squad. I mean, there's there's no shortage of depth. So uh, it's certainly a case of if anyone doesn't perform, they might not be playing the next week. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like the fact that there's so much competition in the team is great because it it makes you work harder. And like and as you said, like if you're if you if you don't perform. The players there to come in and to take their place, um, and it's been proven this season that players have come in, um, be it through injury for another player or whatever, and um, players have come in, took their place, and they've set their their stall and they're they're keeping their places. So it's 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 great to see that there's so much competition, um, because it keeps the the tempo and everything in training up, and it keeps the intensity intensity there as well. And uh, I got to ask you the teammate Desert Island question. If you're going to a <laughs> desert island, some people have interpreted this differently. Some people have, uh, t- um, it doesn't have to interrupt training. You can, we can arrange it in the off season at some stage. But if you're going to a desert island, you can take three teammates with you. I will tell you, Link Craven picked you because she thought no wild animals would come near you. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think that's fair enough. I wouldn't start a fight with you. But uh, <laughs> uh, who would you who would you take with you? Um. I think I take I take Kate Mooney. Um I take Lynn as well, I think. And Avril. Yeah. What did you want to explain your choices? Um I think I'd bring Kate because she's like she's a great singer and she didn't entertain us all. Um Lynn and Avril just seem to just yeah, no, they're just uh, they're good banter and uh, they'd have your back if you ever got into a fight with any animals around this. So. Okay, good. <laughs> good. It's all about it's all about banter and scraps on this island. It seems that's all anyone's concerned about. Um, 
Well, uh, Jeff, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we know uh, we know uh, we know you're getting married uh, in the in the break uh, for the season. Uh, so congratulations and good luck with that. Um, I I imagine. I imagine uh, both yourself and your uh, your uh, wife to be were uh, very eager to arrange the wedding on the day that doesn't clash with the game. Yeah, we were, um, and actually, it actually fell on the day when we were um, we were meant to play um, play both. It's um, but the game actually got changed now, so <laughs> for some whatever reason, I don't know, but uh, it got changed to Thursday night beforehand, so uh, the stars aligned. Yeah, good. Hopefully, hopefully that would be a bad day to get a to get a wallop in the face <laughs> with the ball. I say uh, if you have to go and get and take the wedding pictures with that. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, I won't ask you which teammate you'd marry if you had the choice, but uh, we, uh, we won't go there. But uh, Jeff, thanks very much for coming on, and all the best for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. And remember, at Post Plus Sport, we're raising money for As I Am Ireland. Uh, we're doing our fundraiser all the way to the end of November. So. Uh, the challenge this week is a uh, 100 squats with a 25 kg sandbag. Have to do them all in one go, no breaks, every day for a week. Uh, just how many squats do you do in training? Oh God, um, two sets, different, different, different numbers each week. Okay, do you do 100 with a 25 kg uh, sandbag, or am I beating you on that one? You're definitely beating on that one. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't really feel my legs, and it's only day three, so uh, we'll see. We'll see if we make it the whole week. Uh, at Post Plus Sport on Twitter and Instagram, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube below.